In this installment of Avionics Education YouTube, we're going to talk about the most neglected instrument in the modern aircraft cockpit. Today, we're going to cover the magnetic compass. The trigger for this YouTube video was a Facebook post on a pilot's page. The question was, can I fix my magnetic compass? It's leaking fluid. Please advise. And whenever anyone consults Facebook for a serious problem, you get some amusing answers. Some on purpose, and most by accident. Some examples were, some of the most funny ones were, don't drink the weak whiskey, add blinker fluid, uh, put your phone next to it and use the compass on the phone. Another one of my favorites was, no, only your moral compass. Another one that was on the end that was I just loved was, drink it before it goes empty. After that, fix the leak and fill it with tequila, just in case. In this day of GPS navigation and flight management systems, that simple compass is usually only looked at because of the puddle on the instrument panel. Many think, why do we really need that device anyway? It's hard to read, it requires thought to use, and it's only accurate in straight and level flight. Why can't we remove this simple instrument? It's never really looked at anymore. Well, there are two very important reasons why we still use magnetic heading and not true heading that the GPS system provides. The first reason is that FAR Part 91 on minimum flight instruments required for flight VFR lists a magnetic heading indicator third from the top. Yes, we have more modern capable navigation devices that require very little maintenance and are easy to remember. But remember the FAR 91 VFR equipment rules are the minimum requirements for aircraft operating most anywhere in the U.S. Requiring aircraft to be equipped with a navigation system that includes a magnetic azimuth detector or flux valve would be too much of a burden or financial burden on the aviation fleet. Uh, that's probably going to go away with the advent of ADSB, but remember this is a VFR requirement inside or outside of controlled airspace. The second reason a pilot must navigate primarily by magnetic heading is that ATC tracks aircraft and makes heading corrections by using heading references required by those VFR equipment rules. Which means these air traffic controllers that are trying to keep aircraft separated are giving commands in magnetic heading. They themselves, the controllers are so good, they're going through and already giving wind correction angles for all the aircraft. But if somebody has to go through and keep track of true heading versus magnetic heading, then there's room for confusion. So magnetic heading is what is going to be the primary means of heading information given to ATC. So until all the aircraft can operate VFR, have the expensive navigation system, we're going to have the whiskey compass installed as a mainstay in any cockpit. In fact, even those aircraft with those very capable heading systems, such as the 737 and the Airbus, will still have that standby compass system installed in the aircraft. So now that we've determined that they have to be installed and they can't be deferred, how are these things maintained? Well, first, the pilot flight manual or checklist will include an item on the checklist that says the compass must be readable and that the compass correction card is current and legible. And we'll talk about that compass correction card in a second. Also, most annual inspection checklists will have the compass included, uh, security, visual, the AIA was going to make sure that, that that compass is in good working order and that the compass card is clear and legible. Uh, other thing is also that the dampening fluid is clear and in the collect level of the case. Also, if the aircraft is approved for night flight, the compass must have a functioning light of some sort to light up the heading. The compass card is required to provide the pilot with aircraft magnetic deviations. That could not completely be corrected during the compass swing there's always going to be deviation, which is caused by any electromagnetic field created from equipment in the aircraft itself. So, what if the compass is no longer airworthy? What has to be done and who can do it? Now, this brings me back to the Facebook post about what could be done when the fluid needs to be replaced. Now, most of the suggested responses, we're talking about going to a website and buying the fluid replacement kit. It's not a completely incorrect response, if the aircraft is an amateur home-built aircraft, then the parts are not required to meet airworthiness standards, and they don't have to be performed by a certificated person. 
However, if the aircraft is a type certificated model, meaning that it has an airworthiness certificate issued by the FAA, then the parts that are installed in the aircraft must be such of quality as to not adversely affect the airworthiness of the airframe. And by all maintenance must be performed by an appropriately rated person. Now, any person who holds an airframe rating and is trained to perform a compass installation, has the equipment, can perform a compass swing. Part of the replacement or just removing a rebuilt unit is the calibration of the compass must be verified when it's reinstalled in the aircraft. So anytime maintenance has to be done to the instrument itself, then that work can only be done by an instrument rated repair station or the manufacturer of the instrument. FAA Part 65 specifically does not allow an airframe mechanic to perform maintenance on either instruments or propellers. The FA explicitly identifies a compass as an aircraft instrument. A mechanic can install a compass into an aircraft after maintenance as long as it's new or repaired compass with a airworthiness documentation like an 8130 or some other serviceable documentation from a repair station. Now, many people feel that if I'm taking an instrument apart to refill the fluid, then I'm not changing the compass calibration. However, most aircraft maintenance manuals always require the system to be validated or recalibrated whenever the compass is removed and replaced. And mostly this is because there's no set time limit when recalibration is required or when recalibration requires a compass swing. So when the compass swing is required to be done for an aircraft, again, one of the issues that has to be replaced, then you require to do a compass swing. Now, some older aircraft don't have a maintenance manual that has any information about the aircraft's compass other than security and readability. However, information can be found in the Advisory Circular 4313-2B. It provides recommendations, again, it's Advisory Circular, about when an aircraft compass system is required to be re-swung. Re -swung. Some are obvious, some are not. Uh, the most obvious ones would be whenever the accuracy of the compass is suspected. Um, another reason would be after a cockpit modification or replacement of instruments. Whenever a compass is subjected to shock, or shock could be a hard landing or severe turbulence, these are all things that can that can shift uh, the internal mechanism of the compass and affect its calibration. After the aircraft passes through a severe electrical storm, or after the aircraft receives an lightning strike, these are all issues that could cause the uh, air, some portion of the aircraft to magnetize, and then compass would actually be uh, be attracted to the magnetized section. Another good reason to swing a compass is when there's a change to the electrical system. A lot of these older aircraft are being converted from 12 to 24 volt systems. This is a, a good reason because the electromagnetic footprint of the aircraft will change to re-swing the compass. Another less obvious one is whenever there's a change to cargo that could affect the compass. Uh, we're talking about cargo configuration. Or another one that was in the advisory circular is after the aircraft has been parked in the same place for more than a year. And then the last issue, number nine in the, in the advisory circuit, was when the sensi elements are removed and replaced. And we're talking about replacing, as part of a complete compass system, the flux valve or that standby compass. So now, once we're convinced that a compass swing is required, how is it to be done? Now, with any calibration of a part, it must be performed using calibrated equipment. I've seen many methods used to calibrate a compass that seemed to the pilots like a good idea at time. For example, flying on a VOR radio. I mean, those are in uh, magnetic headings, right? Lining up on a runway or taxiway and then giving it a tweak. None of these methods are not accurate enough to calibrate a compass to the plus or minus two degrees needed to be able to produce the compass card. Some feel that the compass roses that are found at most airports are painted for compass wings. Now, unfortunately, most of these are strictly decorative and are not traceable to a calibration source or they're older than five years if they were done by a calibrated uh, instrument shop. However, if the compass rose is surveyed by the USGS or a repair station with an instrument rating within the last five years and the mechanic has access to the validation documents, such as the compass road correction card, then a compass rose can be used um, at an airport to swing a compass. Now, the most common methods used by instrument shops 
to actually swing a compass is either going to be by using an expensive electronic compass calibrator, and these are usually reserved for jet aircraft that have flux valves, or for most GAA applications, a reverse sensing compass calibrator. Now, the electronic compass calibrator is commonly used for aircraft remote compass sensing units. But for most GA applications, the reverse sensing calibrator is more appropriate. Now, if you want to know more about performing a compass swing on an aircraft, I suggest you can find that information in my Avionics Technician Handbook, Volume 1. Uh, this book can be found on my website or avionicseducation.com or on Amazon. So, to summarize, a mechanic with an airframe, at least an airframe reading on a type certificate aircraft can replace a new or repaired compass in an aircraft and, if they have the training and the equipment, complete a compass swing. Nobody but a certificated repair station holding at least an instrument rating can repair a compass. Now, the only exception would be, again, for home-built aircraft where the owner could refill the fluid. Now, caveat here. Remember, if the compass is not maintained correctly, whether it's home-built or not home-built, this could adversely affect the safety of the aircraft. So when people who are doing this have never done it before need to think about, uh, about this very important instrument in the aircraft. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Aviation Education YouTube channel. If you like this video, press the like button, and please share this video with anyone you know that owns an aircraft with a compass. So until next time, keep it safe.